Hello and welcome to this session on turbulence modeling. So this is in line with the lectures that we are having on ANSYS Fluent. Because turbulence is an important part of modeling procedure, therefore we are having a look at it in, the, in coordination with the other lectures of ANSYS Fluent. So what I expect from you to have gone through is uh, basic terms and methodologies in CFD. You should be well familiar with fluid mechanics and the CFD equations. And if you are familiar with the user interface of any CFD software, this should suffice to the need that by the end of this lecture you can answer questions regarding what is turbulence and why we have to model instead of resolve the complete turbulence phenomena. And there's a whole list of choice of turbulence models we'll be looking at them in the course of this presentation. Just to give an overview, uh, we're going to look at some of the definitions uh, of turbulence and uh, see what happens within the turbulent flows. Uh, what is the concept of energy cascading which actually drives our understanding of the turbulent phenomena and helps us to know how we can model it. And this is one of the points where we'll try to answer why we rather prefer to model the turbulence phenomena than resolve it completely. And we'll follow it up with uh, different kinds of approaches by which this turbulent flows can be modeled. Well, turbulence is encountered in almost every walk of life. Whenever there is a flow, it's very hard to encounter a laminar flow. If you are familiar with laminar flow from the fluid mechanics lecture and turbulent flows. So turbulence is actually a flow in which it's highly chaotic. It's a three-dimensional phenomena. It is not a two-dimensional or a one-dimensional phenomena which means that um, the curl of the velocity vector, which is uh, del cross v, is non-zero. That is, it has uh, non-zero vorticity. And it actually leads to a lot of enhancement in the heat transfer and transfer of any other property. So all the flow equations, the properties get uh, distributed within the domain quite, quite uh, uh, in an efficient manner, actually, if the turbulence uh, is, uh, is starting off in the flow. So there are some examples like uh, a turbulent uh, flow can be when a jet enters into a stagnant fluid, then it starts interacting with the stagnant fluid and starts uh, becoming turbulent. There can be wake behind uh, cars or objects, uh, blunt bodies, which also cause turbulence. Just to have an idea about the different characteristics of turbulence, so it's a fluid motion in which uh, all the flow dependent variables like velocity, pressure and any other flow quantity which fluctuate irregularly in space and time. Now when I say it's irregular, that's very important that it is an unsteady phenomena, it's a transient phenomena in time and it is not at all uniform, it's not at all um, two-dimensional, it is a highly three-dimensional phenomena. So actually speaking, we cannot imagine a CFD simulation of a turbulent flow um, which is a two-dimensional geometry. It's not simply not possible or we cannot imagine a steady-state turbulent flow simulation. So the question is, why do we nevertheless have 2D analysis? Why do we have um, steady-state analysis uh, at all if the f feature turbulence is highly chaotic and highly um, uh, non-periodic in space and time? Well, the answer is that we have something called modeling. And I'll speak about it, how modeling is approached and what is the reason for modeling, what is the justification for modeling. But still about turbulence, it is a rotational phenomena, so it has del cross v being non-zero. And it's usually encountered and assessed by a number called the Reynolds number, which is a ratio of inertial and viscous force. And when these inertial forces exceed the viscous force by a huge quantity, that's when the different lamella start mixing together. So let's say this is a flow which is laminar. So the different layers or lamella are maintained in the flow. And that's when the Reynolds number is below a specific value when the inertial forces are still, compared to the viscous forces, not so high so that the layers are maintained. But once the Reynolds number exceeds that specific value, the layers start mixing together. This mixing can occur because of changes in geometry. It can also be because um, simply the inertial forces are too high that the layers start mixing together and that's when we can say that the turbulence has set in to the problem.